At age 90, you visited the Shaw Town section of Newcastle where you were born. You remember where the store was, and right across here. Now, wait a minute, for the people looking at this film, what store are we talking about? Well, you're talking about my grandfather's store over there at the, near the railroad. On 9th Crossing, up the, on 9th Street. Most of your family were immigrants. Your maternal grandparents were George and Elizabeth Harney. George was an Irish immigrant who had fought in the Civil War. Your paternal grandparents, James and Margaret Ryan, had lived and married in the Irish Catholic ghetto of Wolverhampton, England, shown in this 1880 photograph. Their first son, your father, James Thomas Ryan, was born in Wolverhampton in 1871. The Ryans managed to escape the anti-Irish oppression in England and went to Philadelphia in 1883. The following year, your grandfather took a job with Taskers, a pipe manufacturing company in Newcastle, shown here in a sketch from the 1880s. Although your grandparents could not read and write, they worked hard, bought a home, and opened a grocery store. They succeeded far better in America than would have been their fate in England. Your father, James Ryan, became a toolmaker and a founder and first secretary of the Goodwill Fire Company in Newcastle. In this picture, taken about 1905, your father's with other volunteer firemen at Forth and Delaware in Newcastle. Many years later, a Mr. Toman, who then was in his 90s, told us that your father never smoked, never drank, and never used foul language. He said that James Ryan was respected and admired by everyone who knew him. Your mother, Lydia Harney, was born in Newcastle in 1875. They were married at St. Peter's in 1895. Their first children were you, Jim, Bill, shown here with the infamous Ryan monkey, and Elizabeth. that sadly you only remember your dad from one small incident at age three. I recall it was sticky for the simple reason that Bill and Elizabeth were running up here to meet my dad and I was bringing up the rear screaming my head off and when we got up to him he uh, hugged them and he opened his bunch box and gave me the apple out of, out of the bunch box and everything was okie dokie. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and that was what, 199? Had to be, at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just about because I was three years old. And, uh, so, uh, just a few months after your father's death, your brother Harry was born. It was an especially rough time for your widowed mother with five children. She took in Wash and worked as a janitor at the local school. Your family heated one room with coal, and for the toilet you had an outhouse. Your mother cooked on coal fire stoves and lit the night with coal gas lamps. And coal gas nearly killed you at age three. Francis Reynolds was walking by your house and noticed no one was up. He smelled coal gas, broke into the house, and dragged the nearly asphyxiated family outside. You had blonde hair and carried the nickname Whitey. In this picture, you were sitting on the steps of your home at Clayton Street with your dog, Jack. From the many stories you have told, including stealing a boat to cross the river, buying a rifle and nearly killing a roofer when you first tried it, you were no angel. In Salazianum, in 1924, you went into an apprenticeship at Pusey and Jones in Wilmington. At the end of your apprenticeship, you and some buddies took an old car and went west, taking odd jobs to pay for the trip. Your old clunker got you as far as Kentucky. You returned and worked at Palanca, a company that built airplanes in Newcastle. Your brother Bill worked there as a master machinist. You then took a job with a fiber mill in Newcastle where you worked on punch and die setups to build new tools. Your bachelor days were coming to a close. A friend, Al Sentmeyer, had set up a date for your brother Jim. But Jim was not home, so you went off with Al and met Dorothy Hall shown here as a teenager. This next photo of Dorothy sitting next to you has always been your favorite. In September 1927 at age 21 you and Dorothy were married. 
Here's a picture of you in the backyard at 44 East 4th Street with Dorothy and your mother. Sadly, your first child, Gwendolyn, did not survive, but fortunately, in 1929, your son, Paul, was born. It was a great time. The markets were stirring, and everyone, Paul and Elaine, were still small children. In 1934, you went to work with DuPont's Jackson Labs in Deepwater, New Jersey, where you worked on building the equipment that chemists and chemical engineers needed. You went to work by crossing the river on the new ferry. At this time, you had three children, Paul, Elaine, and Jack. Hunting and fishing were both sport and a way to put food on the table. In the fall, you ate rabbit, squirrel, and pheasant. Avoiding the pieces of shot made eating an adventure. In the 1940s, your family expanded. The twins, Pat and Mike, were born in 42. This picture was taken when they were one. And this next picture with Jack and Paul was shot in 1945 at St. Charles Seminary. In 1948, Anne was born. At that time, Paul was in the Navy, and Elaine and Lou Watson were married. Your first grandchild, Lou Jr., was born. Other notable events in the 1950s were Jack's graduation from the University of Delaware, the first person in the family to earn a college degree. Paul married Peggy Tidwell, and over the years, they added to your family David, Brenda, Stephen, Dennis, Eileen, and Sheila. At work, you became a supervisor for a group designing and making pilot scale equipment for chemical processes. You continued your work with the Knights, and you and Franny Lenore founded Castle Machine. You produced specialized testing equipment for polymers. In 1958, Jack married Barbara Mooney, and over the years, they've added to your grandchildren, Lorraine, Bridget, and Matt. And by then, Elaine and Lou had Lou Jr. and Chris. The Knights of Columbus continued to honor you for your work, and you were shown here with Supreme Knight Hart presenting your past state deputy pin in 1959. In 1965, Mike married Ann Soupy, the granddaughter of Frances Reynolds, who had saved your life when you were three. Ann and Mike gave more grandchildren, Michelle, Robert, and Paul. By 1967, you and Dorothy had been married 40 years and had two great-grandchildren. In the 1970, Anne married Gary Janal and eventually gave you six more grandchildren, Nicole, Amy, Gregory, Margot, Andrea, and Jacqueline. After 37 years with DuPont, you retired to an active life working for the parish, the Knights, and serving on Newcastle's Board of Assessment. In 72, Pat married Cheryl Sutcliffe, and their boys are Stephen, David, and Michael. 1977 was your 50th wedding anniversary. Here in this photo are you, Dorothy, six children and their spouses. And in this next photo is a family reunion with you surrounded by children and grandchildren. You and Dorothy enjoyed trips to Ireland, Europe, and cruises. You enjoyed and continue to enjoy daily trips to meet your buddies at the Senate down at the wharf. After 58 years of marriage, Dorothy died. You were always a rock, but found that even a rock has to have a place to rest when you had lost that foundation. But you were surrounded by family, a growing family. In the 80s and 90s, more great-grandchildren came along, Amber and Ian, Kelsey, Adam, Connor, and Alex, Micah, Joshua, Trevor, and Patrick, Chris, David, Philip, Alana, and Karen. The new great-great-grandchildren, Brian and Laura. 2001, you celebrated your 95th birthday, and your sister Elizabeth, two and a half years older, was there with you. Since that birthday, other great-grandchildren have been added, Madison, Jack Wayne, Jack, Roland, and Brooke, the newest. And just this past month, at nearly 100, you met for a dinner with other past state deputies of the Knights of Columbus. It has been a long journey, one in which you have been true to your God, your faith, your family, and your community. Happy birthday, Dad.